Even if you're allergic to math, or math is allergic to you, I'm going to demonstrate two dosage calculations examples that prove you've got what it takes to get 100% on your next dosage calculation exam. All you need is an easy-to-follow six-step process, my two unbreakable rules, and the buddy system. Because dosage calculations is not even about being good at math. It's about finding a method that works for your brain. And today I'm showing you how using two quick examples, one for a PO medication and one for an IM medication. Let's start with the PO med example. For those of you that are new to nursing school, PO stands for by mouth. It's Latin terms. If you haven't already watched my other video where I teach my six-step method that I use to turn med math into something that's actually fun for nursing students to do, don't worry because you will still be able to follow along with the examples I'm doing here. The doctor orders 650 milligrams of acetaminophen to be given POQ4H. The pharmacy has 325 milligram tablets available. How many tablets should be administered? Now, again, for those of you that are new to nursing school or maybe learning this before nursing school, which is what I recommend, let me go through some of the vocabulary. PO means by mouth. Q4H is an abbreviation that means every four hours. Now, when it comes to the medications, don't even worry about what the medication is because if you're strictly studying dosage calculations, this could be gobbledygook for all you care. So don't get thrown off by names that you can't pronounce. The first step of my master dosage calculations method is to collect our assessment data. And there's only three things that we need to find out. Now, this is a problem that's on the simpler side. So there's not as much we need to pull out of the problem. But if you have something more complicated, you still only need three things to identify at first. I recommend, however you write it, do it the same way every time. You'll see I always put things the same way. This builds muscle memory in your brain so that when test anxiety kicks in on test day, you just go through the motions automatically and still get it correct. So the easiest thing to figure out is what we're solving for. And it says, well, how many tablets should be administered? We're trying to figure out tablets. I'm going to abbreviate tab. Now, with my method, we always plug in buddies, okay? And buddies are two things that are the same. Even though they are wearing different Halloween costumes, that would be the units, so they look different. Now, with tablets, what is the buddy? Sometimes we put what I call a generic buddy, and that's something that we assume is there. We don't usually write it. I like to write it, though, because it messes up my brain if I leave an empty spot. In chemistry, you would have left an empty spot, but not here. So how many tablets should be administered? That's going to be tablets per what? Per dose. Every time we administer it, we're giving a dose. Dose is one of the common generic terms, so you can look for that even if they don't write it. And we can double check ourselves by asking the buddy system question, which is when we solve this and we get the final answer, however many tabs that is, well, if we give that many tabs, do we know one dose has been given? And the answer will be yes, because by definition, that's what we're figuring out. And if a dose has been given, do we know that many tabs has been given? And the answer again is yes. So if you can answer yes to that buddy system question in both directions, then you know it's an appropriate buddy. The second easiest thing to figure out is usually the order because they will often say a healthcare provider orders, you know, whatever. In this case, we see 650 milligrams of the acetaminophen and we are still missing a buddy. Sometimes you have to look around in the sentence to find the buddy. Sometimes it's hidden. Sometimes it's a generic buddy. This is the part that comes with practice because there's only so many ways they can hide buddies from you. And so once you've practiced uh, enough, you start to see these things automatically. But let's look through it. So we have 650 milligrams of what? That's of acetaminophen to be given every four hours. Every four hours cannot be a buddy. This is actually a hidden buddy because it's a dose every four hours. So if four hours has passed, has a dose been given? Okay. But what we can give is this is a dose. So each time you give the acetaminophen, you're going to be giving 650 milligrams. Another clue you can use is that you used dose up here. So there's a good chance we're going to be using dose as one of the buddies here because we're going to need it to satisfy our two unbreakable rules later. We're going to put dose and check the buddy system question. If we've given 650 milligrams, have we given a dose? By definition, that's what the order is. So the answer is yes. And if we have given a dose, have we given 650 milligrams? The answer is yes. Perfect. Now, what's available? Sometimes this is the trickiest one for nursing students, but again, you just follow the clues. You look for the uh, units we've found so far and see if you see anything else in the problem. But in this case, there's really only one number left, and that's 325 milligrams. That's what the pharmacy has. That's what's available. So it's 325 milligrams. What, what's the buddy for this? We can't use dose because you're only allowed to plug things in twice. And we've plugged in milligrams twice. So what else do we got? 
Well, I see tablets here. So let's see. Would that make sense? The pharmacy has 325 milligram tablets. That does make sense, I think. And we'll check with the buddy system question. If I have 325 milligrams, do I have one tablet? Yes, we do. If I have one tablet, do I have 325 milligrams of the medication? Yes, we do. That satisfies that. We have our step one done. Now, step two is everybody's favorite step because it is the quickest and easiest. And all we have to do is we're setting up our problem. I've plugged in what we're solving for, cross it out there so I have a visual way of seeing I'm done. And then I set up my little crosshatch thing and I'm done step two. That's great. Now is my favorite part because we get to put on our Sherlock Holmes hat as we follow the clues. The way we follow the clues is by our following our two unbreakable rules. Our first unbreakable rule is the units we're trying to solve for go on the same side. If we have tablets up here, we know we're going to have to plug in tablets somewhere up here. And if we have dose over here, we're going to have to plug in dose somewhere over here. Now, you want to choose the thing that's the easiest and the laziest to plug in. Do not guess. You can only plug something in if it has a tab on the top, and you can only plug in dose if it has dose here on the bottom. Now, we're lucky because we have dose and we have tabs, so we get to decide, and it does not matter which one you pick. The order that you plug things in does not matter. Let's just go with, with the order, and we can flip-flop things if we need to because, remember, these are the same things. But in this case, we're going to be plugging in the exact way that we collected the assessment data. I cross it out so I show that I can't use it again. and. You want to be very visual so you don't make any mistakes. I circle it to show that I am done with dose. I cannot plug anything else in. The next thing I go back and I find, okay, I've got milligrams and tabs. And that's convenient because I want to solve for tabs and I want to get rid of milligrams. Milli so getting rid of milligrams is rule two of our unbreakable rules. And that is things we want to get rid of have to go on the opposite side. So since I have milligrams here, that means I need to have milligrams somewhere down here. This is an example of where we're going to flip-flop something. So I wrote it with milligrams on top and tabs on bottom, but that's not going to work because tab needs to be on top. That's okay. Because they're buddies, we can put tabs on top. We can put the milligrams on bottom. That's totally okay to do. Cross out our milligrams. I'm going to cross this out because we plug that in. Circle tabs. Now I have a visual way to check, did I completely set up this problem? And I clearly did because everything I've solved for is solved for. Everything that I'm eliminating, that's in the dumpster fire out back. We took those Halloween costumes off and threw them out. Great. So now we get to the math part. And the math is easy because it's multiply across the top, multiply across the bottom. And we get rid of everything we eliminated, so no more milligrams, but we don't want naked numbers. So we keep our tablets. Okay, we got, this was easy math multiplication. I can do it in my head. <laughs> we have dose and then we divide. 650 divided 325. Don't feel bad if you want to use a calculator, okay? But that, it comes out to two tablets per dose. And that is our final answer for this PO problem. Now let's move on to our IM injection dosage calculation. The, the doctor, it should say healthcare provider, orders 5.7 milligrams of morphine sulfate to be administered via IM Q2 to 6 hours PRN. PRN just means as needed. The pharmacy sends a bottle containing two milligrams per milliliter. How many milliliters will be injected? We're going to start with our step one because we do this the same exact way every single time. And what are we solving for? We're solving for milliliters per injection. We could say injection, but I like to stick with dose. It's good to use the same word every time. Uh, it helps for simplicity. Uh, and we can check ourselves when we know how many milliliters to give and we give it. Will that be giving one dose? Yes. And when we give one dose, will that be how many milliliters we give? Yes. So that is an appropriate buddy to solve for. And then the order is 5.7 milligrams. Oops, I better get my decimal point in. Now, what is the buddy going to be? Well, we have 5.7 milligrams to be administered. That's our clue. That's a dose. So when we give that medication, we're going to be giving a dose. Let's double check. 5.7 milligrams. If we give that, have we given one dose? Yes. If we give one dose, have we given 5.7 milligrams of the medication? Yes, we have. And then what is available? In this case, the pharmacy has sent what's available and they give us the concentration. And the concentration is there's two milligrams of morphine in every milliliter. Sometimes it helps to think about what that actually means. If the medication is a molecule, there's two milligrams worth of the medication molecule dissolved into every one milliliter of the liquid, the water, okay? So if you pull out one milliliter of that water, 
then you know you have two milligrams of the medication molecule floating around in there. And if you could somehow only pull out the two milligrams of the medication floating in the water altogether, you know that you would have pulled out one milliliter. That's how that works. Now, let's go ahead to step number two, the fastest and easiest step that's everybody's favorite, because now that we have our assessment data, we're going to set up the problem. And that's it. We cross that out so we know we've already plugged it in. And now my favorite part, we get to put on my Sherlock Holmes hat again to follow the clues. Now, remember when we plug in, don't guess, plug in the lazy way. We're looking for something milliliters or something dose so we can satisfy rule one. Things that we are trying to solve for go on the same side. This time I'm going to go ahead and plug in this first. Why? No other reason than my eye saw the milliliter first. We can flip-flop this because they're buddies. So even though I wrote the milliliters on the bottom, we know it has to go on top because of rule one. And then two milligrams is going to go on the bottom because that's the buddy. And then we cross it out. We can't cross out milligrams because that is per rule two. Things that we're trying to eliminate have to go on the opposite side and we don't have anything there. We also have not solved for dose yet because per rule one, things we're solving for have to go on the same side. So these are our new clues that we get to follow. And we can look at our assessment data and look, we have dose. We have milligrams, so we're going to be able to finish up this problem. But when we plug this in, we put dose on the bottom. This time we're going to plug this one in exactly how it's written. And milligrams is going to go on the top. We're done with that because when we put things on the opposite side, we can cross them out. And we are finished with that problem. So now what we need to do, now we get to sadly take off the Sherlock Holmes hat because now it's the easy math. And you guys, see? The math is easy. You can do this math. Now it's we multiply across the top, 5.7. We get rid of all the Halloween costumes that went in the dumpster fire, and we're only putting what we're solving for. We do not want naked numbers, so do not skip your units. And then on the bottom, per dose. I am going to pull out my calculator for this one. 5.7 divided by 2 is 2.85 milliliters. Now, if you, since this is kind of a generic term, we can drop that if we want to. Now, 2.85, uh, I did not put in this problem. I should have. Every problem, best practices, should tell you exactly what to round to. But in this case, let's say we want to round to the tenths place. Let's say it tells us to round to the tenths place. We are not finished. This is still incorrect until we round. The tenths place is right here. What we do to round is we look at the place we want to round to, Look one spot to the right. If it's five or higher, we're going to cut it off and bump this up. If it's less than five, we're just going to cut it off and leave it alone. Now, in this case, of course, five is five or higher, which means we're going to cut this off. We're going to bump the eight up to a nine. And the dosage we're going to give, and our final answer is 2.9 milliliters. If you want my dosage calculation cheat sheet, including the top conversion factors to memorize, my two unbreakable rules, the buddy system, and of course, a review of the six steps to follow every time you do a dosage calculation question. Make sure to comment with DC on this video, and I will send it to you. That is D as in dosage and C as in calculation. Comment with DC, and I will send you the link as a free bonus. Now head on over to watch the full breakdown of the method that I just demonstrated to you so you can learn it for yourself. This applies to any dosage calculation, no matter what kind, and there's no formulas required. I'll see you there.